Hello guys, my name is Caleb, I'm from KCNE Studios, and today we are going to be backwards reviewing Godzilla 2000. And this pretty good it made my uh it made my honorable mentions which is kind of like in between it, it's like in my top 11 through 15 or 20 or something like that but so it's an all right movie the suit Godzilla's suit is one of my favorites actually it kind of seems to be reminiscent of the 1962 suit from Godzilla vs. King Kong um I mean that's what most people were seeing it going after. I, th I, and that suit is probably my favorite from the Showa series. Like, I kind of, I, I kind of wish they made that Godzilla vs. the Wolfman movie, just so I could see, see that suit again, and also it'd be kind of an epic battle between him and the Wolfman. Next, I want to talk about the story. So, the tone. The story kind of sets this dark-ish tone to the movie. Um, I think they were going for more of a darker pitch uh, in this movie, but that's just kind of what it seemed like. So the story goes that there's these Godzilla chasers, basically. If you ever watched that show, Storm Chasers, it's kind of like that, but Godzilla's like the tornado, basically. Um... And basically what it seems like is Godzilla's just kind of been coming recently. Like, when he comes in the beginning of the movie, it's not really like that's a big deal because he's come before. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there because I'm not super sure. Uh, that's just what it seemed like. Like, Godzilla's been coming off and on and uh, attacking the cities and stuff. But the story is that there's those Godzilla chasers and they're going to try to get research and stuff on Godzilla and they brought this uh, reporter lady. She paid them to go in the car with them and get some pictures and stuff. And so then there's also this other guy who kind of is part parted with the military, but he's also funding a research thing, but he more wants to kill Godzilla, and it's, I, I don't know, he's got this partner guy that seems to be more into the research of Godzilla, um, and he's actually friends with the main character, who's with the Godzilla storm chaser thing, but, I don't know, I, I don't, it kind of seems like he's hinting towards he really doesn't like this guy, but then sometimes he just kind of has to care about him because he's going to die at the end of the movie because you'll see uh, Godzilla's there and he comes and he goes to the city and he wrecks stuff. And then the the other, the rich guy who's kind of with the military and kind of with the different research team, uh, I don't remember any of the names for this movie. No, his name is Katagiri. And so, his research team goes and they find this big old rock. And so they take these balloons and they lift it, it, and it's under the ocean. And they take these balloons and they lift it up. And they just kind of study it and stuff. And then the next morning, it comes up as the sun is coming up. And then it gets up. And then it flies away. And later it goes and attacks Godzilla. Something that I notice about this movie is that there's a lot of green screen scenes. Like, it's kind of interesting. Instead of more of a set on the bay, when Godzilla's coming the second time, it's, it's this shot going backwards, kind of like it's in a helicopter. Um, Godzilla's coming from the sea, and it's about... 10 or 20 seconds and he's just walking and then you see the millet the tanks on the ground and the uh helicopters flying around but you just see a green screen of Godzilla walking around all this uh all this beach and all those 
military stuff. It's kind of interesting because you don't really see that much at all. You usually see him on a set instead of being green screened. But that's kind of interesting to me. Uh, the rest of the stories goes like the the giant rock kind of turns into a... Well, the rocks are around this spaceship thing. So basically it was just a huge spaceship. And it goes after... It kind of kicks Godzilla's butt. And then later, uh, the, the Godzilla chaser people team with uh, one of the guys who's with Katagiri's research team. And they find out this thing about Godzilla. It's called the Regenerator G1. And I guess it's the way he regenerates or something. I didn't really catch that part. But... Anyways, the giant monster, or the, sorry, the spaceship thing comes and it lands on this giant building that the research team is in, and uh, they end up kind of wanting to blow it up. Katagiri sends his military people to blow it up while the main character is in there, and he knows that he's in there. He's like, um... The guy that the main character is friends with gets a call from him, from his kid or something, saying that he's still in the building and not to blow it up. And then Katagiri, he hears it, and he's just like, looks like I'm just going to have to send some more flowers. And then he pushes the, the, the blow-up timer button, and he ends up getting out of the building, but the spaceship on the top of the building doesn't get damaged at all. Uh, instead, he ends up sucking energy, like, out of Tokyo and stuff. It's it's kind of weird, but then Godzilla comes. Uh, the spaceship takes these wires and stuff in the ground, and they wrap around Godzilla, and that's not the first time that he's uh, that's happened to Godzilla before. Um, in Godzilla vs. Biollante, uh, Biollante used his tentacles to kind of attack Godzilla and strangle him and stuff, and King Ghidorah's bit him before, so, and I guess that counts, because his necks are kind of long and stuff, but I guess that kind of seemed reminiscent to Godzilla vs. Biollante, because that's really the only other time that's happened to him, if you count King Ghidorah, but King Ghidorah's different. But I just kind of think that they got the idea from Godzilla vs. Biollante to do that to Godzilla. But anyways, the wires and stuff that are wrapped around Godzilla, well, the spaceship kind of f- uses them to fling him around and stuff. Uh, eventually, he gets up, he uses his atomic breath, uh, his, his spikes glow up, and it melts off the, the wires, and he attacks the spaceship. Uh, then it turns into this weird thing. Here's a picture. It kind of looks like something out of War of the Worlds, but in more of a organism form. But I don't even know. Uh, a few seconds later, it turns into Orga, which is the monster that he fights. And the monster fight is pretty good. It's, I'd say it's a little better than Godzilla vs. Mega Gears, just because it's not a flying monster, and flying monster fights can be pretty annoying if if it's against Godzilla, because a lot of the times what they just do is they have it dangling above Godzilla and just kind of it flinging its arms around, and the camera's all up into their face, and it's shaking around, and you can't tell what the heck is going on. Um, but this fight scene is pretty good. Uh, I mean, it, it's a little slow, but it's it's good enough. Um, eventually, Orga goes up to Godzilla. Um, he opens his mouth, and then got like, like huge, like his mouth just, op- I, I don't even know how big, like like a hippopotamus would open up his mouth that big, and then Godzilla, just 
goes right into his mouth. He, like, he sticks his head into Orga's mouth. Um, which is kind of weird. But then Orga apparently starts cloning him using the gener Regenerator G1 uh, somehow that he got from Godzilla. I think he, at one point, he sucks some energy out of Godzilla. And then he started he started cloning Godzilla to himself. So he started getting green and got purple spikes on his back. Then Godzilla charged up his atomic breath and just expl like decimated Orga. Like half of him was gone, the big half. Like his his legs are kind of small and his his arms are huge and his body is, is huge and he just blew off that whole part. Like all that was really left there was his legs. And then it just fell down after he roared. But then Godzilla goes over to, uh, well, Katagiri was on a building, and then the, the Godzilla storm chasers were over there too. And Godzilla goes up to him. Everyone else is just like, get out of the building and stuff. And then Katagiri's just right there, and he's like, Godzilla! And then Godzilla just goes like, and kills Katagiri. And then, like I said earlier, the, the main character kind of goes out and, like, screams and is, feels sorry for him. But you'll, you'll see what I mean if you've seen the movie. Uh, but the actors are pretty good. I mean, it's voice acting, so y you're only getting about half of the acting, because you you're just getting the visual acting, not the, the voice acting, and hardly ever do we get good voice actors, honestly. But I think it was good enough. I think this, the tone of this movie makes it to be a little bit of a darker movie for Godzilla. I mean, it felt like a Heisei movie. That's 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 the thing with a lot of Millennium movies. Besides I mean I mean pretty much yeah, they they do feel like Millennium movies. Uh besides GMK cuz GMK is a little too dark for a Heisei movie. But well not that the Heisei series wasn't a dark series. I'm just saying that some of the movies in there are kind of reminiscent to the uh, AC series. So, yeah. Uh, the monster fight was pretty good. I mean, you know, it's, it's just a good old monsters, giant monsters beating on each other's skulls and stuff like that. Uh, the spaceship form of Orga really kicked Godzilla's butt. Then when he went to his other form, he kind of didn't do it as good. But it's it, it's it's better than just a f another flying fight scene like with Mothra and all the other f Godzilla against a flying monster thing. And I think it's good that they just stuck with making him a a ground monster. I guess. Uh, and I think Orga has a lot of character to him. I mean, he's a really good original monster. And I I mean, he, he had this like shoulder cannon thing that he could shoot Godzilla from. Uh, I mean, he's just a really original monster. And you can't really base him off of anything, which is pretty nice. Uh like, if you were to give him one definition, it would probably not be something that you've already heard of before, like another monster. Uh, but I want to give my final thoughts. The movie's pretty good. I mean, it was good enough to get onto my honorable mentions section. It's not one of my favorites. I like the suit. I like the fight scenes. The movie can get a little slow at some points, but that's okay because... They're usually just talking about Godzilla through the whole movie, so it's not different and stuff. But let's get to the 
final part of this video. So what I what I'm thinking I should do is I want to talk about if there could be a sequel or a remake of this movie. Um, that's that I I guess that's just what I want to do with all the other Godzilla movies besides besides the Heisei movie series. I wouldn't really talk about a sequel besides if it's Godzilla vs. Destroya, I would just talk about remakes. Um, this movie, would I prefer a remake or a sequel? I would prefer a sequel because I was more there for the giant monsters than for the story, because the story's alright. Um, I, I did like the idea of the Godzilla chasers and the whole regenerator G1 thing, but I think I would definitely prefer a sequel just to see that Godzilla suit again. Um, I don't know if Godzilla vs. Mega Gears was supposed to be its sequel, but I just don't know. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. I really like this movie. Um, if you want to follow us on Pinterest, Etsy, get on the Facebook page. I would really appreciate that just to get our channel growing a little bit more so uh yeah thanks for watching guys